Hello and welcome to Down the Scope. Today we're going to have a look at a section of testers from a grasshopper. If you want to have a look at the slide yourself and find the different structures and cells, then you can access a digital copy at downthescope.co.uk. A link to the slide is in the video description. That's right, invertebrates also have testicles, which produce sperm as a means of transferring genetic material for reproduction. Just looking at the slide at low power, we can start to see some kind of structure to the organ. There are various linear lobules of tissue with a cellular tip and then a layer of streaky black followed by a less cellular base. Each of these lobules is called a testis follicle and the sperm's journey begins at the tip in an area called the germarium. The germarium contains germ cells. This is a generic name for cells in any animal that give rise to the gametes. In this case, spermatocytes rather than oocytes or eggs. As well as germ cells, the tip of the testis follicle is lined by large apical cells, these ones here. These apical cells provide nutrients to the germ cells via cytoplasmic extensions. The apical cells are not immediately apparent, but the germarium is probably the first layer of cells lining the tip of the testis follicle. Most of what you can see here are spermatogonia, which are produced by dividing germ cells. Each spermatogonia will be encircled by cyst cells, which are sometimes barely visible at the periphery of each group of spermatogonia. And here we can see groups of spermatogonia within their cysts quite clearly, although I found it very challenging to find any cyst cells. The spermatogonia begin to divide in their cyst and eventually increase in size, forming spermatocytes. This area here is called the zone of growth. You'll see that this area is full of these large cells with huge nuclei displaying open chromatin. Compare them to the nuclei of nearby cells such as these ones lining each testicle follicle. And you'll see what I mean by open chromatin. Usually DNA is wrapped up tightly around proteins within the nucleus. This helps with storage space but also is a means of gene regulation since tightly bunched up DNA won't be transcribed to make RNA and subsequently proteins. Chromatin refers to this DNA protein complex, which forms chromosomes. In general, more active cells or dividing cells will have larger nuclei with more dispersed chromatin, such as these spermatocytes. The DNA in spermatogonia is being replicated in preparation for cell division, so we can see the chromatin much more clearly as it's unwound and the DNA is replicated. Of course, with all of this DNA replication, there's probably more chromatin in these cells, further increasing the size of the nucleus. Sometimes we can see the chromatin forming chromosomes as much more discernible individual structures. These are cells in the process of mitosis, or cell division, as the spermatogonia replicate within their cyst. The number of times the spermatogonia replicates is dependent on the species. Those of grasshoppers will undergo five to eight spermatogonial divisions. Once these divisions are complete, the spermatogonia mature to form spermatocytes. Each spermatocyte will undergo two rounds of meiosis to ultimately produce four mature spermatids, although this can vary between species as well. This happens in the zone of maturation and reduction. The process of meiosis involves DNA replication followed by two rounds of division to create four cells with half the number of chromosomes. Each of these cells will be genetically different from one another. I'm not going to go into the details of meiosis and mitosis, since there are much better resources out there, but we can have a look and see if we can spot some dividing cells within these testes. The best example I found on the slide is this part here. In these two or three cells, you can see chromosomes lining up along the center of the cell. Each one is attached to one of the two cell poles by spindle fibres which you can just about make out as a streaky appearance in the cell cytoplasm. These spindle fibres will drag the chromosomes into their respective cell pole before the cell splits. There's no way for me to tell if this is the first or second division in meiosis, but it illustrates the metaphase of the cell cycle wonderfully.
Once meiosis is over, each of the resulting daughter cells is now a spermatid. Hey, Florence. Meow, meow. Meow. Once meiosis is over, each of the resulting daughter cells is now a spermatid. They are immature and not yet ready to go out into the world as spermatozoa. The maturation of spermatids to spermatozoa is called spermiogenesis and occurs in the zone of transformation, which is towards the tip of the testis follicle. You can clearly see the changes that occur as the spermatids mature. This section represents newly created spermatids. They are disorganized within their cyst and have larger nuclei with one or two nuclei which you can see as dark spots within the nucleus. As they begin to mature the nucleus shrinks and the spermatids organize around the cyst periphery. The chromatin in the nucleus begins to condense and the nucleus goes from a round to a needle-like conformation as you can see in these cells here. The cytoplasm of the cell also begins to shrink and a flagella is constructed at the opposite pole to the nucleus. What we end up with are these bundles of dark material, which is the nuclei of many spermatozoa, accompanied by this fibrillar material, kind of like this material here, which must be the flagelli. You'll also notice some other cells mixed in amongst the spermatozoa. Uh, Oop. So, for example, I found some down here. I've no idea what these are, um, whether they're some kind of support cell helping with the final stages of maturation or the remnants of a cyst. Again, your guess is as good as mine. The hormonal control of spermatogenesis and spermiogenesis is not well understood in insects. In mammals, it's moderated by steroid hormones like testosterone. Insects also have their own version of steroid hormones called ectosteroids, and it's likely that they perform some homologous role, although the details and mechanism are vague or unknown. I'm going to diverge from the slide to end the video, and we can look at some of the diversity of sperm morphology in insects. An insect sperm has the same basic structure as that of mammals, in that there's a head which contains the nucleus and other organelles, and a flagellum which allows the sperm to swim to its destination. While they share the same basic plan, some insect sperm have much more hooked, linear heads compared to most mammals, although they do look quite similar to rat sperm. Their size can vary immensely from species to species. One species of Drosophila, a type of fruit fly, has been reported to have sperm nearly 6 centimetres long, although they rarely exceed a width of 0.7 micrometers, so don't think you'd be able to see them with the naked eye. Here's a scanning electron micrograph of one of these giant sperm. The ball is formed by the flagellum of the sperm, which would normally be stretched out straight. Production of giant sperm like these seems to have evolved independently in several groups of insects, but it's not clear what the evolutionary advantage to producing fewer but immensely large sperm is. I just wanted to leave you with a little montage of electron micrographs from cross-sections of insect sperm. They show organelles such as mitochondria and microtubules in the flagella. And if you want more information, the figure legends and descriptions are available in the paper Overview on Spermatogenesis and Sperm Structure of Hexapoda. But I was struck by the geometric beauty of these patterns and think they stand alone without interpretation or commentary. Thanks for watching, and until next time, goodbye.